Hello viewers and welcome to TechForge. I'm your host Nath and today we'll be looking at a SwiftTech expandable AIO. Let's have a look at that and then see what it looks like when it's fitted. Stay tuned. Harking back to the early days of PC water cooling, Swift Tech have been around for almost two decades, so it comes as no surprise that their product stack is quite varied and includes these neat, expandable, all-in-one liquid coolers. The H240X2 we see here is a 280mm AIO with the ability to have further components added as desired. Integrated RGB elements in the res housing and CPU block give it an up-to-date look and the interaction of the light and the reservoir can have some pretty cool effects with transparent fluids. The Clear Mayhem's tubing allows the user to both adapt to large or smaller cases by either cutting the existing tubing or adding longer tubes, which is a relatively painless experience. In saying that, the fixed nature of the res pump combo does limit orientation somewhat, but for most users this won't be an issue. The included pump, fan and RGB controller is fairly easy to get set up, although it can require some planning to ensure the various cables can all reach. The inclusion of fluid dyes to colour the included Clear Mayhem's fluid is a nice touch also. The 2x140mm SwiftTech fans are great performers and I will actually be taking around a 3C hit on my peak CPU temperatures by swapping them to the Cooler Master RGB fans I have to complement the RGB nature of the build. In order to test the claims that H240X2 can handle multiple cooling blocks, I will be adding a Gigabyte G1 Gaming GTX 980 Ti to the loop which should look fairly smart in the vertical position in the Core P3 chassis. I don't plan on overclocking the GPU just yet. I'll first focus on getting the CPU right and seeing what thermal headroom is left over. One important thing to note is that the H240X2 is only AM3 compliant, but luckily the Crosshair 6 Kiro comes with both AM3 and AM4 mounting holes drilled into the PCB. So thank you Asus for making my pre-planning shortfall, and thank you John for the lend of the AM3 backplate. Finally, before any fun can begin, care must be taken with the plastic ends on SwiftTech's fittings whilst tearing the unit down for preparation for installation. I recommend softening the tube ends with some hot water or a hairdryer so they come off easily, otherwise shearing force can damage the connectors. Once that is done, install the parts required and cut the tubing to suit. Now with the tubes off we can take a closer look at the back of the radiator, the plastic fittings at the back with the, uh, the pump and the reservoir, a little bit of water came out, nothing too drastic. With it all disassembled now we can take a look at the Apogee V2 block, it's nickel plated and it's a concave base, very slightly concaved, uh, which isn't a major drama, we just might need a little bit more pace than usual to get good contact around the edges. These are the plastic fittings that connect to the CPU block, they're very easy to break uh, when you're trying to remove the hoses if you don't soften the hoses first. They're not extremely dependable but uh, they do get the job done for now. So that pretty much covers it for the unit itself. It's now time for me to duck off and go and install it and then we'll come back with some before and afters. How about that?
So there you have it folks, a quick look at the Swiftec H240 X2. It looks like a really good value proposition at the moment, but time will tell. We'll have a look at some performance and some thermals in an upcoming video, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But for now, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.